Mitochondria have numerous roles in cell physiology, from metabolism and energy production, to programmed cell death, to steroid hormone synthesis. Despite the importance of mitochondria in both fundamental cellular functions and disease, very little is known about the function of mitochondria in human embryonic stem cells and their differentiated progeny. In this video, we will show you how the mitochondria respiratory chain complexes of human embryonic stem cells can be analyzed using in-gel activity assays. Hi, I'm Ivan Forestov from the laboratory of Michael Taitel in the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at the University of California, Los Angeles. Today we will show you a procedure for assessing mitochondrial respiratory complex function in human embryonic stem cells with in-gel activity assays. This procedure involves isolation of crude mitochondrial pellet from human embryonic stem cells, separation of mitochondrial complexes of the oxidative phosphorylation system with high-resolution clear-native polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and subsequent in-gel activity assays. So let's get started. The first step in this procedure is to isolate mitochondria from human embryonic stem cells. For this assay, we will use human embryonic stem cells that have been grown on a matrigel covered plate in a feeder-free condition. In order to collect mitochondria from our human embryonic stem cells, we start by washing them with warm 1x PBS pH 7.4 and then trypsinize the cells for 5 minutes. You can use 1 mL of 1x trypsin per well in a 6 well plate. After five minutes, you can stop the reaction by adding an equal volume of fresh trypsin inhibitor, one milligram per mil in 1x PBS, and harvest the cells. The collected cells are then centrifuged at 200 times G for five minutes at room temperature. After spinning, discard the supernatant and resuspend the pelleted cells in 0.8 to 1.7 milliliters of ice-cold mitochondria isolation buffer with a freshly prepared cocktail of 1x protease inhibitor. How much buffer you use depends on the size of the cell pellet you get. After the pellet has been resuspended, incubate it on ice for about 10 minutes. Following the incubation on ice, we dounce the cells with a homogenizer. This might take about 40 to 50 strokes. We can check for the completeness of homogenization by staining an aliquot of the dounced cells with tripan blue and looking through a light microscope. It should look something like this. This is the first shot after 50 strokes with a dounce. This is the second shot after 80 strokes with a dounce. Once the cells are homogenized, centrifuge them at 20,000 times G for 10 minutes at 4 degrees C. This will give us a crude mitochondrial pellet which will also contain nuclei and larger cell fragments. Before collection of the pellet, we have to weigh the collection tube in order to estimate the subsequent pellet weight. Pour out and discard the supernatant, and then weigh the precipitated crude mitochondrial pellet by subtracting the weight of the tube. At this point, one can proceed to solubilizing the pellet, which will be shown in the next step. In order to solubilize the crude mitochondrial pellet, we start by keeping the pellet on ice and vortexing with 35 microliters of ice-cold solubilization buffer for every 20 milligrams of pellet that we have. Detailed information on the buffer compounds is mentioned in the accompanying written protocol. Following vortexing and addition of solubilization buffer, and before adding digitonin, we transfer the resuspended pellet into a tube appropriate for high-speed centrifugation. And then we add 20 microliters of 10% weight per volume digitonin for 20 milligrams of pellet weight and mix by flicking the tube. After it has been mixed thoroughly, incubate the mitochondrial pellet for 5 to 10 minutes on ice. Dodecyl beta d maltoside or DDM, or Triton X100, can be substituted for digitonin to solubilize proteins. 
the choice of detergent and its quantity may affect the formation of supercomplexes or multimeric forms of mitochondrial complexes. Following the incubation on ice and once the pellet has been solubilized, we'll centrifuge it at 100,000 times G for 15 minutes at 4 degrees C. We will then collect the clear supernatant. We are now ready to prepare the supernatant for running on our gradient gel. For native gradient gel electrophoresis of mitochondria, we recommend using an acrylamide gradient gel from 5 to 13 percent with a 3.5 percent stacking gel. To prepare the gel, we will use an acrylamide bisacrylamide mix as described in the written protocol. Acrylamide bisacrylamide solution is prepared in advance and stored at 4 degrees Celsius in a dark place. Acrylamide and bisacrylamide are toxic chemicals both as a powder and in liquid form. So special attention should be paid when you work with them. We combine the acrylamide bisacrylamide solution with an aliquot of 3x gel buffer composed of 1.5 molar 6-amino hexanoic acid and 75 millimolar imidazole at pH 7.0. The amount of acrylamide bisacrylamide solution that we add to the buffer will depend on the percent gel that we are making. To make the gradient gel, we will make one 4% mix and one 13% mix, and the stacking gel will be a 3.5% mix. Do not forget to add glycerol to the 13% mix. When all three mixtures are ready, we add an appropriate amount of ammonium persulfate and temed to the mixtures and pour the mixtures into a gradient former casting chamber. The left part of the chamber contains the 5% mix. The right part of the chamber contains the 13% mix and a small magnetic stirring bar. We start to pour the gel by opening the right part of the chamber. Then immediately we open the left part of the chamber and let the 5% solution mix with the 13% solution to make the gradient. We add a small amount of isopropanol to the top of the gel to form a sharp, straight border for the gel after polymerization. Approximately one hour later, when the polymerization of the gradient gel is complete, we remove the isopropanol and pour the 3.5 stacking gel into the apparatus and insert a gel comb. We will assemble and run the gels in a cold room of about 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. To run this gel, we will be using two different buffers. In the anode chamber, we'll use a buffer containing 25 millimolar imidazole hydrochloric acid, pH 7.0. The cathode buffer will contain 50 millimeter tricene, 7.5 millimolar imidazole hydrochloric acid, 0.02% weight per volume dodecyl beta D maltoside, or DDM, and 0.05% weight to volume deoxycholate, pH 7.0. In order to prepare the supernatant to be run in the gel that we've just poured, loading buffer is added to yield a final concentration of 5% weight to volume glycerol and 0.01% weight to volume Ponso S. We typically add a 10x stock solution containing glycerol and Ponso S directly to the supernatants. Now we're ready to load the gel sample onto the gel. We will load the gel wells with a volume that contains 20 to 40 milligrams of the crude mitochondrial protein per lane. Immediately after loading, the gel is run at 100 volts. Once the sample has entered the stacking gel, the voltage can be raised to 500 volts with the current limited to 15 milliamps, although we usually run the gel overnight at 70 to 100 volts. We stop the electrophoresis when a sharp line of the red Ponso S dye approaches the gel front. Now that the gel has been run, we can analyze the activity of different protein complexes directly in the gel. The time of incubation for each assay depends on the efficiency of protein solubilization and the amount of material loaded per well. Complexes 1, 4, and 5 usually yield stronger signals than complexes 2 and 3. This is why staining time for complex 2 and 3 
should be longer. To test the complex activity, we will need to use specific buffers for each complex. You can find the ingredients for the individual buffers in the written protocol. Now, we will cut out individual lanes of the gel perform the in-gel activity assays separately. For all the complexes, incubate the gel slice in their respective buffers for several hours at room temperature. For all complexes except for complex 5, after incubation, fix the gel in 50% methanol and 10% acetic acid for 15 to 45 minutes. The fixed gel is preserved in 10% acetic acid. You see here how the staining of complex 1 appears. There is one deep purple band in the gel slice that corresponds to complex 1. Clear gels let you perform densitometry for mitochondrial complex activities and make comparative analyses. After densitometry, we usually dry the gel slices for long-term storage and or for scanning in order to obtain a high quality image. Complex 2 stains the same purple color as complex 1. Complex 3 and complex 4 both give an orange or yellowish staining band. Here are examples of complex 2, 3, and 4 staining activities. We have just shown you how to analyze the activity of mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation complexes which were extracted from human embryonic stem cells and separated by high resolution cleonative gel electrophoresis. So that's it. Thank you for watching and good luck with your experiments.